It's Garrett with Birch Boys. This video feels a little bit overdue. We're gonna show you how we make our tinctures. This is our tincture making process. Not all tinctures are made equal. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons this video is important. There's a lot of different ways to make a tincture. Some are better than others. Some are specific to the herb or mushroom you're working with. Uh, but this is our process that we use for all of our wild craft and fungi, and we're proud of our process. What is a tincture? Why do we make tinctures? I wanna just quickly touch on this. A tincture in its simplest form is an extraction of a plant, herb, or mushroom uh, for healing or medicinal purposes. What a tincture strives to do is accomplish two things. You want to pull out the water-soluble micronutrients and compounds of value, and you also wanna pull out the alcohol-soluble micronutrients of value, because these are not the same. For example, there's certain polyphenols in chaga that have health benefits that you extract through water, uh, but then there's certain triterpenes in chaga that you're not gonna get in a, in a chaga tea or a hot water extract, and you actually have to use alcohol. It's kind of like a full spectrum extract uh, using natural solvents. And then, of course, we're discarding the non-soluble organic material. That just means we're straining away the cellular junk that remains. That is a tincture. Here is one of our two tincture machines. We have a batch of lion's mane, which has already been brewing now for 72 hours. That is our minimum time that we will run a batch of mushrooms for uh, in order to make a tincture. Basically make massive tea bags, right, to contain the mushrooms as we brew. And we'll put about 2,000 grams in to a batch. But I will say, every mushroom, from mushroom to mushroom, whether it's lion's mane, chaga, reishi, whatever, each is gonna vary a little bit. So in obtaining a consistency in your tincture, you, you actually have to adjust uh, in, in each batch. You know, you may have to add a little bit more mushroom. You may add a little bit more time. To start the tincture batch, we're really just taking the mushrooms, weighing them out, putting them in here with distilled water. We don't use municipal water, we use exclusively distilled water. Uh, we order it by the pallet, cane alcohol. Yes, we are using organic cane alcohol. And our tinctures are now certified organic. One thing I should mention, we brew our tinctures at exactly 178 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything higher than that is going to degrade uh, and destroy some of the vitamins uh, and minerals that are present in the mushrooms. To be honest with you, I don't really perceive that as a problem. I'm not looking to chaga or lion's mane for my daily dose of vitamin C. I'm looking to chaga or lion's mane to pull out some of the more complex healing constituents. Now, while there are vitamins in the mushrooms and that brewing these to a point where it's boiling or going anything above like 180 degrees is actually going to destroy those vitamins and we try to prevent that, I don't really see that being the value of a tincture. I don't see that being the point. So anyway, let's start uh, draining this batch and showing you the hot water extract. Our tincture machines have a pump, which is really nice because it recirculates the water uh, in other words, it's constantly stirring it. So this is the color of our finished lion's mane hot water extraction. Nice and dark. This is a beautiful batch of lion's mane hot water extract. So what's next? The next step is actually to take the mushrooms we just brewed out of the tea bags and we're gonna use this little doohickey. Uh, basically, this is gonna enable us to collect all of that remaining moisture so we're not wasting um, the hot water extract still stuck in the lion's mane itself. We're gonna squeeze it out with this press. 
Uh, and, and that's also important to get the moisture out of the lion's mane because this is the interesting thing. The lion's mane begins the alcohol extract after it has already gone through the hot water extract. So we're using the same mushrooms um, twice. We basically pull the hot water constituents out, which break the mushrooms down to a point where the alcohol soluble constituents are going to come out easier. And that's when they begin the alcohol soak, which is what you see over there. People will often then ask, what, do you store the hot water extract in the fridge while the alcohol soak occurs? Uh, and no, we don't. We actually have one alcohol batch going in advance at any given time. So like, in other words, the lion's mane that we just brewed for this hot water ex extraction will now be placed in alcohol to soak for the next lion's mane hot water batch we brew. And we already have lined up lion's mane that has been soaking since our last batch a number of weeks ago um, that we're going to use for the alcohol portion of this tincture batch. I hope that makes sense. I'll try and explain it better. This is the lion's mane post hot water brew. So like I said, it would be a serious amount of waste to not press that out of the mushroom you've just brewed. But the really important thing is to get the moisture out of there as best as you can before you put it into your alcohol soak because you don't want to mess with your, your alcohol percentage. So we're going to now take this lion's mane and put it in alcohol to start our next alcohol batch. So this is the lion's mane we just pressed, or a portion of it anyway. There's still more to press, but this is what we will use to start our next alcohol batch for a future tincture. And this is the batch that we started last month. This is the finished alcohol extraction. And again, what do you think we're gonna do here? We're gonna put all of this alcohol saturated lion's mane back into our doohickey and squeeze all the juice out of it because otherwise it would be a waste of alcohol, micronutrients, and money. And here we are, the final step of the tincture making process. What we have on the left is our fully strained alcohol extraction. Uh, on the right we have our fully strained hot water extraction. It is important to wait until this cools down before you mix the two, uh, just because the alcohol boiling point is actually uh, lower than that of water. So uh, it would all evaporate away if you didn't let it cool down a little bit. and. Uh, we use a fixed ratio of 3.5 parts hot water extract to one part alcohol extract. So essentially we have uh, four liters of the alcohol here, 14 liters of the hot water extract. That's a perfect ratio. And uh, we do sometimes have to kind of normalize things to get that ratio to work right. 
Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of taking an abundance of hot water extract and evaporating some of it away. Uh, if you have uh, some of the alcohol evaporate, which we kind of had in this case because uh, we need to get lids for these, um, the alcohol was evaporating. So I just added more alcohol because the alcohol does play an important function in the preservation of the tincture, the shelf life. And it's not like uh, there was any loss because as it evaporated, it just created a more potent alcohol extract. We just kind of restored the alcohol level to what it was supposed to be. And anyway, as soon as we get those ratios normalized and let that cool down, we mix them. I do just want to stress the significance of the different colors that you see here being directly indicative of the different types of compounds you're pulling out of the same mushrooms. You know, it's, we, we take the mushrooms, we put it through the hot water extract, then it soaks in alcohol, and it's pulling out entirely different things. So this right here is, is the point of a tincture. Uh, it's kind of beautiful, especially when you're doing multiple tinctures at once, all the different colors. It really makes you feel like a chemist. Uh, but we're proud to be a tincture makers. This is our process. And again, uh, it is a two-step process. You do a hot water extract and you do an alcohol extract on the same mushrooms, ideally. Some people will try and skimp the process and just kind of get like, uh, rather than like pure alcohol, like 190 proof, some people will get like 90, 90 proof vodka and assume that you can in one go get the water soluble micronutrients and the alcohol soluble because it's like part alcohol, part water, but that's really not an effective way to do it. This is the right way to make your tincture. From there, we put it in our bottling machine and we bottle up our glass bottles. We label them up, we seal them, and that is how you get a Birch Boys Lion's Mane Tincture. Mm-hmm.